Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to another Chem Complete. And in this particular lecture, we are going to focus on the benzene aromatic reaction for sulfonation. So this is part of the Organic 2 series, and we are dealing with benzene reactions right now. So for sulfonation, which we would write out up here this way, sulfonation, all right. Sulfonation is the addition of an SO3H group to the ring. This will be an electron withdrawing group, meta director, and a deactivator as well. Okay, so the way that we do this uh, is a little bit similar to the nitro addition that we saw earlier, but not exactly the same. So you're going to start with sulfur trioxide. And so this would be the form of sulfur trioxide that we have right here. And I would also utilize H2SO4. I'm not going to draw the whole structure here. Um, I'm just going to draw, and obviously this isn't proper from a Lewis perspective, but H2SO4. Okay, and this oxygen up here will go ahead and grab one of the protons from H2SO4. And so again, just like in the nitration, we come up with an HSO4 minus. And so the resulting sulfonyl group that comes out of that is going to be a positively charged sulfur. So again, sort of like the nitronium ion, this is going to make an excellent electrophile that the ring is going to go after. So if I wanted to do this, the key ingredients, aside from benzene, obviously, would be SO3 and H2SO4. Okay, so again, this is going to be the electrophile that benzene will be going after. So let's take a look at this. If I were to draw the overall reaction, I would have my aromatic ring and I would use SO3 and H2SO4 in order to accomplish this transformation here. And so I would get an SO3H group. Again, electron withdrawing group deactivator to the ring. So you should have a general idea, especially if you have viewed some of the other reactions in the nitration one we just went over before this. If I have this compound here right and this is positively charged I'm gonna come out and the pi electrons from the benzene ring will seek that positive sulfur and so the next step in the mechanism would be that the sulfonyl group as added to the ring. Now keep in mind, as this comes in, I need to open up, right, uh, one of these oxygens. And that also makes sense because I need a plus and a minus in order to balance out the charge to get this neutral compound up here. And so when I do that, what I end up with is the following, right? And so there's a plus on the sulfur, a minus on this oxygen. There is also, keep in mind, a hydrogen here, which will need to return aromaticity to the ring. And there is a plus charge associated with this carbon at the top of the aromatic ring. So the HSO4 minus is the compound that could come and remove the hydrogen. Again, these electrons go back to the ring. And I finish off strong with an aromatic ring that now has the new sulfonyl electron withdrawing group added to it. So this is the general process for the sulfonation. Again, very important concept that you're always returning the aromatic ring to its original state. You've just added a new group when you do this. Uh, so there is sort of how the nitration had a side reaction where we could do a reduction of that particular compound. You can also do a reaction where you turn the sulfonated benzene ring 
into a phenol. So that's O-L, meaning the alcohol form of the benzene ring. So let's take a look at that just for a second here. So if we were interested in that process, we would first take the aromatic ring and we would do a sulfonation. And that would lead to the compound that we just examined. Now, the next step, sort of how we have the tin chloride and the, the H3O plus with the minus OH for the reduction of nitro to aniline, we can turn this into a phenol by using the following set of reagents. So number one, I'm going to use NaOH. Now, when I use NaOH, this needs to be accompanied with very high heat. So we usually do about 300 degrees Celsius with the sodium hydroxide when you are attempting to convert this into the phenol. And then the next thing that I would need to do is I would finish this off with an acidic workup. So with both of these, I would be able to take the sulfonyl group that I find on the benzene ring and turn that into an alcohol. And so that alcohol is the uh, phenol functional group. We remember that's one of the common names that we use. And um, you have to be careful because this reaction um, can be very vigorous due to the high heat. And so it's not going to be very compatible if you have a whole lot of other substituents other than alkyl groups. So in other words, I could have something like a, a CH3 here, okay, and that would still come out in the product, but I need to avoid uh, NH2s or halides or a lot of those other things because of the very extreme conditions. Basically, you're going to have uh, degradation of other side substituents on the ring or side reactions that would occur. So the idea is if you want the phenol, you need to get the uh, sulfonyl group on there, uh, plus or minus some alkyl groups if you want to have those on there. And then you need to proceed forward with this next step before you start putting on other reagents. And then I could go through and say, okay, I want a bromine. I want something else on there. So uh, just to review the sulf uh, sulfonation of the benzene ring, you're going to use uh, sulfur trioxide and H2SO4. That will form the sulfonium ion that we need. And once we have the uh, sulfonium ion, we can go ahead and attack that with the benzene ring, add the sulfonyl group. And if you are interested in phenol, which is probably a more common substituent, you can use sodium hydroxide at high heat and acid in order to turn that group into the phenol substituent. So I hope that this lecture was helpful. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, for all the up-to-date information, and thanks a lot for learning with me. I will see you guys for the next lecture. Take care.